I'm an Englishman based in Scotland who loves Scottish football, but I'm not gonna come on here and start calling it a farmer's league like a lot of you might be expecting an English person to do. I love the Scottish game and I only want the best for it. I feel quite privileged in the position that I'm in and that my viewers have put me in, so a massive, massive thank you. Do remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new as well, thank you very much. But yeah, I do feel very privileged in the position I'm in within Scottish football and I do feel like as an outsider, I've only been here a couple of years, I can look at Scottish football from afar without any prejudices, with all complete neutrality and um, kind of come up with four things that I would change about Scottish football. First up, there is nowhere near enough TV coverage of the Scottish game. Firstly, let me just come to this article, right? I found a couple of articles. This is on the Daily Record. So, on this is from uh, the one that I'm going to sort of read a couple of bits from just now. It's from November 2021, so about five months from when I'm filming this currently. The Scottish Premiership is outcompeting the English Championship in terms of TV viewing figures. Sky Sports coverage of the SPFL has been criticised in recent weeks. Remember, this is from November 2021. Most notably, after a full card of top flight action, which produced a thrilling night of football, was snubbed in favour of the EFL Cup. Obviously down in England there. In October of 2021, there was a full list of Scottish Premiership fixtures, which produced 21 goals and not one of the games was shown on live TV through the broadcast that made the deals for the Scottish Premiership. That's through Sky, of course. And how much do Sky pay the Scottish football authorities to show the football of Scotland to the people of the United Kingdom? 150 million pounds. Oh, that might sound pretty good, you think? Over five years, 30 million pounds. A year and so let's compare that to some of the other like leagues around the world I found a article here on the Celtic star so shout out to the Celtic stars written by uh, Connell McGinty I hope I said that right sorry Connell if I haven't but I think I have Connell McGinty on January 2022 so just a couple of months before I'm filming this video right now so he makes some really really good points and do remember to check out the Celtic star after this video um, two biggest clubs the two biggest clubs in the country are due to battle it out in a huge match this coming Wednesday night at Parkhead in one of the most famous derby matches in the world that will have huge ramifications in a tight title race all this for around 30 million pound a season yeah he goes on to say there isn't much point in comparing uh, the Scottish money and in, in TV rights to the English Premier League um, but he does actually say look even the bottom club in the Premier League takes home double the amount that the whole Scottish Premiership takes. That is just crazy. Right, so looking at the English Championship and comparing that to uh, the Scottish Premiership, he has said at £120 million annually, they have a deal in place worth nearly as much as per year as our five year contract with the same broadcaster. Is their product more exciting than ours? Do they have teams such as Celtic who are known worldwide and have a huge fan base? A title race between two bitter rivals with four massive games between the two guaranteed per year? No, they don't. That's what he says there, and I know what he's saying, but um, I do still think the English Championship is probably one of the best and most exciting leagues in the world. With the Scottish Premiership, there isn't a huge amount to play for outside of sort of the top two teams and the bottom two teams with the, the relegation playoff for the penultimate team and the team that finishes bottom going straight down. Whereas in the English Pro, uh, English Championship, you can have teams as far down as 10th within the league who are still vying for playoffs right towards the end of the season. And uh, there's also more teams that go down as well. So um, I do think that there is more um, competitive jeopardy in the uh, English Championship, which is why it's maybe more attractive to more viewers uh, worldwide. But let's compare the Scottish TV money to the TV money of certain leagues around Europe. He uh, goes on to say, the Scandinavian countries again bring in more TV revenue than Scotland do. Eurosport pay 50 million a season for Sweden's league, Discovery Network pay Norway 35 million, and Denmark sell their league, Superliga, for 46 million. I think that Scottish football, and I've said this a few times, really undersells itself, and the TV rights are just an absolute joke. Like, no wonder there isn't a huge amount of money in Scottish football if this is the amount they're selling the TV for. And it's not even just the amount they're selling it for. I mean, there are just very, very few games on. So I'm sure that a lot of people will know this website, live-footballontv.com, and you can uh, search 
what live football is on in your country um, yeah over the next few days and stuff and I've brought that up here as you can see on screen right now for Scottish football and uh, yeah this week tomorrow we have done Firmland v Partick Fish well, then of course we've got the the uh, international break so we won't go into it too much around this time but uh, the football restarts again on uh, the first weekend of April there, 2nd of April. Oh, and look, we do have some games on TV, it says. But if you look along to the right-hand side, it's only on DTV, Hibs TV, Motherwell TV, RCFC TV, and Saints TV. So, yeah, it's all the Saturday games are only live if you want to watch it through the club's um, streaming services and then we get on to Sunday of course the Old Firm Derby that is obviously going to be broadcast and then we have Rafe Rovers v Queen of the South and the SPFL Trust Trophy Final all right fair enough that's on TV we'll give that first weekend a pass all right it's after the international break we've got the Old Firm on and a little cup final um, there the SPFL Trust Trophy it's a bit like the Johnston's Paint Trophy or the Papa John's Trophy um, to all the English viewers out there but look let's go to the next weekend we'll give that weekend the benefit of the doubt and uh yeah, obviously the uh, the European games are on TV, so Rangers up against uh, up against Braga, of course, on BT Sport. Uh, but that's not domestic football. And there's like Scotland v Wales under 18s. But um, Friday the 8th of April, okay, yep, there is a Scottish. Uh, championship game on as they usually is on a Friday night on the BBC we'll give them that but then if we look towards the weekend oh again look all the Saturday games including Celtic including Hearts including the Dundee derby Dundee United v Dundee is not on TV that's a big derby that people in Scotland would love to watch Scotland has the highest percentage of the population that go and watch live football as if there wouldn't be people in this country who'd like to sit down and watch that and then we look at Sunday oh who's on TV again it's Rangers again if you support if you support a team in the Premier that isn't Rangers or Celtic, chances are you just won't be able to watch them um, on TV at all. And yeah, you look after that. Oh, back to Tuesday, Scotland women v Spain women on BBC Alba. Fair play, they do a good job of promoting the women's game over on uh, the BBC here in Scotland. But then you have to look, and there's Rangers v Braga again on Thursday, and then back round for the Championship on the Friday. And then Saturday, we have a BBC One and Premier Sports One. Uh, we got the Scottish Cup semis. So you have to really wait until the Scottish Cup to watch like any sort of the big teams on TV. It's absolutely mental. There should be a streaming service in Australia. I live there. You can stream all the Premier League games, all the Champions League games in one app. You pay like a tenner a month and you get all the games, all the highlights. You get everything live. Um, and it's mad that Scotland doesn't have that. People from the SPFL, if you are watching, create an app, create a platform where people can watch all the games live, can watch highlights and everything like that, and uh, I guarantee you'll make way more than the pennies that Sky are paying you currently. Ooh, I feel like I need to breathe after that uh, Scottish football TV rant there. The next thing that I will change is the pyramid system. On your screen currently is the Scottish pyramid system. You should watch my um, video if you haven't already. I did some ground hopping where I went from the bottom tier, as you can see on screen right now, the eighth tier, right up until the premiership. I went from one by one, I went from the eighth tier team to a seventh tier team, to a sixth, to a fifth, to a fourth, to a third, to a second, to a first all in the space of a day, just to kind of uh, show the complete Scottish pyramid, basically. But um, it gets very complicated, especially down towards the bottom there. So as you can see from the west of Scotland League, which is to the right-hand side of tier six, look at the Premier Division, seven relegation spots and one promotion spot. So then three come up from the west of Scotland, A, B and C leagues, whilst there's, you know, a fourth division where I don't even think teams can go up from. And then you see the east there, which is a little bit more sort of normal in the amount of promotion and relegation. But I just don't know how you can have a West of Scotland League which relegates seven, unless they're just trying to balance it out in this first, because it's very new, the West of Scotland League. I think it came in in 2020, unless they're just trying to balance out the teams right now. But it doesn't seem like a very well thought through system right now. And don't even get me started on the Lowland League and the Highland League. It's something I've covered a lot. So to get Get into the SPFL you have to win either the Lowland League or the Highland League which is the fifth tier of football essentially like the conference in England the Highland and Lowland are the same fifth tier you have to win one of those leagues but that doesn't get you promotion you have to beat the other champion a quite a hard game isn't it you have got to beat a champion of a team that's like level with you so you can have a team like Brora who have won two Highland Leagues in a row and haven't gone up they're still in the Highland League but once you beat that team you then have to play another playoff against a team that finished bottom 
finishes bottom of the SPFL League Two. The only team in the entire 42 pyramid, the SPFL Professional Football Leagues of Scotland, that don't get automatically relegated are the dead last ones, the actual 42nd team. It doesn't make any sense, this, um, this pyramid system. And it wasn't even a pyramid system until about 2013. It was like a closed off Super League that you had to bid your way in and out of. I've had a lot of time to think about the uh, Scottish pyramid system and I would do it like this. I would have the top three leagues, the Premiership, the Championship and League One. I would have those as uh, leagues of 14 and then that would just be your 42. The 42 that are in there right now is currently 12, 10, 10 and 10. Whereas you can amalgamate those into three leagues and have them as 14. You could still play 38 games a season that way, play each other uh, twice home and away and then split the league and play the ones that are um, within your half twice again. I think that makes you, that brings it up to 38. It would also add more prestige to the teams. If you have 14 teams in the Premiership, that is 14 more prestigious teams. At the moment you have 12 prestigious teams, you have 12 Premiership teams and if you're a team in League 2 and you go up to League 1, it makes you more prestigious. So just ratcheting these teams up a little bit just makes the whole teams and leagues seem a little bit more prestigious from an outsider's perspective. And remember, I'm English and I like to think about it from an outsider's perspective, like I mentioned in my intro. I like to look at things from afar and see how people from not from Scotland would see these things. So yeah, top three leagues of Prem, Championship and League One is what I would have. And then I would have League Two South and League Two North. And that is where you can amalgamate the best of the Lowland League and the Highland League and then restructure the uh, the sort of um, non-leagues after that. But yeah, I would have a League Two South, a League Two North. Um, again, it would add more prestige to the sort of teams that are sort of vying to get into uh, the non-leagues, uh, uh, vying to get into the league rather. Um, and then, yeah, like, I just find the, uh, even though I've done a lot of looking into it and I'm sort of getting into it a little bit more, but I just feel like at the moment when you have the West of Scotland League and there is one promotion playoff spot, and seven relegation spots. Oh, and also, actually, from the sixth tier, it's only one team of, you see how it's like East, South, and West are all the same tier? You only get one, look, one promotion playoff spot. The East, South, and West uh, champions have to play each other and only one of those teams will go up. It's like when it gets towards this point of the season, towards the end of the season, there's teams that are like fifth who have got nothing to play for and it's just, like it leaves teams with more um, like dead rubber games. Is that the word dead rubber? Dead rubber. What's that thing where like uh, you have nothing to play for and you're just like playing another mid-table team? You get loads of those games at this point of the season because there's not enough promotion and there's not enough relegation. That is something that needs to be sorted within Scottish football is the pyramid system. Whew, another rant. Jesus, I'm absolutely losing my breath in here today. Um, yeah, I hope you're enjoying this video. Like I say, I just want the best for Scottish football and um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the comment section below on some of the points that I raise. The third point that I'm gonna raise and something that I would change about Scottish football is the kind of disdain and hatred for the old firm teams. Now, don't get me wrong, I know what it's like to hate a team that wins all the time. Sir Alex Ferguson pretty much ruined my childhood due to the success that Man United had. And if, to be fair, if I was a Hibs fan, a Hearts fan, or a fan of a team in the Championship, or League One, or League Two, or even a non-league team, I would probably look um, jealously at Celtic and Rangers and also for the fact that they kind of hold so much power over the powers that be in Scotland, the SFA, the SPFL and sort of the decisions that get made within all of the leagues. You only have to look as far as the Lowland League to see uh, the B teams obviously buying their way into that and the controversies that go around that. So I do understand why there is some disdain towards the old firm clubs, but I did a tweet about, when was this? 13th of Jan, 2022. And you can follow me on Twitter. It's always in the description box. Um, but I said, how lucky are we to have Celtic and Rangers in Scotland? And I got so many replies from people saying, look at this uh, gif here, sure, if you say so. This is edging towards unfollow territory now, Sam. Um, and then someone's written here, Graham, seriously, they can leave anytime they like. Both clubs are horrendous with all the hatred their fans bring through the bile they inflict uh, on every club they play against. And again, I totally understand that the uh, odd min uh, minority will ruin it, um, but I do think Think that we have to look at the old firm as two incredible clubs that put Scottish football on the map. We spoke about the TV viewing figures and stuff and why it's not seen around the world more. The old firm is the jewel in the crown that will be able to uh, rake in more money and hopefully filter down with TV revenues and stuff from around the world. And I would like to see that change. And it is through the old firm clubs that more money is brought into Scotland and Scottish football 
every year. Fans from all around the world, like I get messages from people all the time asking me, and I can't get back to them all, so I do apologize if you're one of them. Um, I get messages all the time from people saying, um, how do I go about getting tickets for Celtic and for Rangers games? And they're from abroad. And I think we need to remember that uh, Celtic have lifted the European Cup, the first British team to do so. Rangers have had some fantastic European nights at Ibrox recently, which is bringing more eyes onto the league over here. And when Gerard was the manager, and now there's Giovanni Van Bronckhorst at Ibrox, and Celtic have got their new Japanese revolution. I see loads of Japanese viewers coming onto my Celtic videos, especially when I stick Kyogo in the title. And um, it's just brilliant to see the two teams sort of battling it out at the top again. And that is only gonna bring more eyeballs in from around the world. So guys, I understand why you might hate the old firm teams, but just remember what they do do for the game here. The fourth and final thing that I would change about Scottish football is the pitches. I totally understand why teams of the lower leagues have uh, 3G pitches and Astro pitches. In a lot of these towns, there aren't places for the teams to train. Um, for instance, let's take one, maybe Stenhouse Muir. They're a great community club as well. And there's a lot of schools and kids and other teams that want to use that pitch. And so if it was grass, they just wouldn't be able to. It would be cut up every week and uh, it would be only, uh, it, they'd only be able to use it for the men's uh, football team, which it is, I guess, therefore, uh, mainly. But Stenhouse Muir have a women's team that use it. Like I say, they use it for a lot of the community. Um, and I do understand why teams use it. It's a revenue builder, like we spoke about earlier in the TV section. There's not a huge amount of revenue even for the top teams in terms of the TV. So, um, yeah, the, the lower team's going to be making even less. So I understand why they want to make money out of uh, 3G and artificial pitches. But it raises the question, and I hear it a lot in the stands, should there be artificial pitches in the top tier of Scottish football? Do let me know your thoughts on that in the comments section below. Hamilton and Kilmarnock both have plastic pitches and they got relegated last season. I know a lot of fans are happy. I do believe Livingston are the only team left in the Premiership now with an artificial pitch. Again, I put it to you, should that be allowed? But then like, why shouldn't it be allowed? If they were in the Championship one year, um, then they'd have to totally rip it up and relay it the next year if they were to get promoted just to be in the premiership then they might get relegated again they've got to like redo it all probably at their own cost so yeah it's uh it's a tough one to sort of get your head around that but that takes me on to some of the grass pitches which leave a lot to be desired i'll be honest look at the dundee pitch from yesterday there was like a few really sort of like patchy bits in there and i also do just need to point out fur hills pitch this season when i've seen it on highlights and stuff it just looks absolutely terrible and i know that Partick Thistle are sharing this season with Queen's Park, so I do understand why it would be worse like there's two teams playing there currently, but it still doesn't look good for the game when you want to see when people from abroad are like I say, me, an Englishman, uh, if you come up ground hopping in Scotland, I mean I live here now, but if an Englishman was to come ground hopping, say they were up here to see Celtic or Rangers on the Sunday, and they were picking a game in Glasgow to go to, and they thought, oh I'll go to Partick Thistle, that's not far away, and they go and see the pitch like that, it really doesn't leave a good impression at all. And compare it to the English lower leagues, there's absolutely no comparison. I made the comparison when I was at Dundee, look at the Barrow pitch, Barrow are right towards the bottom of English League 2, and their pitch is immaculate. Dundee are in the Scottish Premiership, and their pitch was pretty awful. I don't know how you can have one team right at the bottom of the English uh, Football League having a pitch like that and then right towards like the top of Scottish football having it in the top tier they're obviously bottom of the Prem but um, top tier of Scottish football looking like that um, maybe plastic pitches are the way to go for some of these teams I'm not sure why they get so bad the weather can't be that much worse in Dundee than what it is in Cumbria in Barrow anyway um, so yeah I'm not sure what can be done again your comments in the comment section below would be highly appreciated on this issue. A massive thank you for watching this video. Please do remember to hit that like button if you got this far. I do just want to say a massive thanks to the channel members as well. Um, absolute legends. You are helping to keep this channel going as are the people who watch the videos regularly and hit that like button and who have subscribed and stuff. I really, really, really appreciate all the support. I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway. Like I say, it's uh, Englishman's ramblings on Scottish football. I would love to see it improved. I want to see more Scottish teams in Europe. I want to see the pitches better. I want to see more games on TV. I just want a better fan experience 
for you guys, the ones who love it, who are from here. I think you deserve a little bit better in some of these um, some of these issues, like the pyramid system and stuff like that. So yeah, if Scottish football can uh, see this video, the powers that be, and change a few of these things, I think it would be the betterment for you guys, the fans, and for me as well, because I'm a fan of the game up here too, as well. A massive thank you for watching. I'll leave some videos on screen. Please do click on one to carry on watching. What about this one? What about this one? What about this playlist or this subscribe button? I don't know what way it's going to be at the moment. But yeah, please just click on something. I'd really, really appreciate it. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.